Hi guys, this is Sadek from Goblin.com. In this video, we'll show you how to fly the latest superior OS GSI ROM, Android 16 base, on any Android phone. So please take a backup of all that on your phone. And let's get started. First off, solve the table info app from FDWIT onto your phone. Just give me a second, the app is over here. Go to the second tab and please verify shown as supported under treble. As you could see, it's shown as supported over here. If that's all well and good, then your next course of action is to open this article in new tab. I'll show you why in just a moment. Let's open it now. And thirdly, now get the link of the ROM from here. This is the ROM link file. Superior OS, just give me a second. Hit, hit a refresh and the Superior OS over here. Open this link in a new tab and let's get the file from here. Let me see the variants. Okay, we have just two variants, the GS and Vanilla. For example, all the other things are as follows. AM64 is the CPU architecture. You can verify from here, it's the same as on your phone. Then both A, B and B mean the same thing, which is system as root. And you could see we have enabled system as root. So both, whether it's the A, B or the B, both mean the same thing. You may have a look at my article as well. Then apart from that, next is the GS or vanilla. I'm using a GApp build and that is it. So once you've got the ROM file, extract it by 7-zip. So do a right click on the ROM file, choose show more options, 7-zip and extract to superior OS. We'll take a few seconds for it to be extracted. Let's wait for that to complete. Well, it's taking some time. Let's minimize it. And now let's start with the ROM flashing. In this regard, if you're using a non-Samsung phone, then use the step 4A. But if you are on a Samsung phone, then scroll down and use the step 4C. The step 4C is given at the end of the article. Let me show you here. So choice is all yours. Either use the step 4C for the Samsung phones or the step 4A for non-Samsung phone. Can I using a non-Samsung phone? So the step 4A will be followed now. So in this regard, your first action is to get the Android SDK from my article, extract them onto PC, and you will get the following files as you could see over here. One that is done, now enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. The debugging is required for ADB command, and OEM unlocking is required to unlock the phone. So let's enable both the toggles. For that, first off, you go to the settings menu. From settings, go to about phone and tap on build number or OS version seven times. Then go back, go to system, Dev option and enable OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. On Xiaomi phone, you will get a warning. So check mark, I am aware of all the risk. Then after 10 seconds, tap on the OK key. And with this, we have enabled debugging. You might get one more prompt. So again, tap on OK or allow. And that is it. Let's now verify if the debugging has been turned on or not. For verification, type in CMD in the address bar of platform tools. Hit the enter key. Type in the command of ADB devices and verify you're having an ID. As you could see, we are having this ID. If that's all well and good. Now you have to unlock the phone, which vary depending on the phone which you're using. Let me open my article over here. So in case of the Pixel, nothing and OnePlus, simply boot the phone to fast boot mode. Then use the fast boot flashing unlock command. You'll get a prompt on your phone. Use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. With this, the phone will be unlocked. But for all the other phones, the steps are somewhat different for Xiaomi phones. If you are on a HyperOS, you have to use the HyperOS exploit approach. For both the HyperOS 1 and 2, I made an article in the video, which is inside this HyperOS article. Then in case of Samsung phone, you have to boot the phone to the download mode, then long press the volume up key to go to device unlock mode, then once again press the volume up key to unlock the phone. And this will take a few seconds. When that is done, boot to the OS and then re-enable Wi-Fi and verify your OEM unlocking is shown here, enable and gray out. So with this, you have bypassed the vault keeper and that is it. Then for Realme phone, you have to use the in-depth test APK. So carry out the task and when that is complete, your next course of action is to get the GP meta file from the same firmware which is there onto your phone. So first of all, have the look at the firmware version from the phone's build number. So go to about phone and have a look at that. Let's talk about a few OEMs. First of all, let's talk about Xiaomi phones. For Xiaomi phone, get the file boot drop. It will be in a .tgz format extracted. You will get a tar file again to an extraction and you will get the following files. Let me show you in just a moment. The files will be over here only. So this is the file boot drop of Xiaomi phone. Extract them and then you will Get the images folder, extract that, and get the file of BB Meta IMG. Copy it, paste it here. Then, if you talk about the Nothing phone, the factory image are there on the GitHub page. So, get it from there. Then, extract it, and you will get the following files. Get the file of BB Meta from here as well. For Pixel phone, you have to use the factory image. Again, then go to the images folder and get the file of BB Meta from here. For OnePlus, Realme, Oppo, get the file of payload bin from the firmware. Extract the payload bin file via the Enhance tool, launch the tool, then go to payload dumper, click on browse, choose the file of payload bin, then click on open. After that, extract the simply extract the boot IMG file from the firmware, and that is it. 
once you have got the file of VB Meta, transfer it inside platform tools. Likewise, also transfer the file of GSI inside platform tools. So this will take a few seconds. Let me copy it. Only the IMG file is required, which is over here, superior OS IMG file. So let's copy the file, paste it here. For the ease of convenience, I'll do a re renaming and rename it to, let's say GSI, name becomes GSI.IMG. When that is done, let's now boot the phone to fast boot mode. For that, type in the command of ADB reboot boot loader and hit the enter key the phone should now be in the fast boot mode in a few seconds and once that is done type in the command of fast boot devices and verify that you are having an id let me show you as you can see we are having this id if you are not having this id then install fast boot drivers onto your pc the link for the same is given in my article only so you may install the drivers from this link once that is done do a right click on the windows icon and choose device manager then expand the android phone section and verify your phone is shown here as you can see in our case, it's shown here, that's all well and good. So now first of all, you have to turn off the Android verified boot, AVB, by flashing the file of VB Meta. So copy the entire command, paste the command in the CMD window. It's not complete. After that, boot the phone to fastboot D mode. So type in fastboot, reboot, fastboot, and hit enter. The phone should now be in the fastboot D mode. The screen of the fastboot D will vary depending on the phone which you are using. In the Xiaomi phones, it will just be a fastboot D over here. On OnePlus phone, the screen will be somewhat different. On Pixel phone, you will get the following screen as you could see. So depending on the phone, it will vary, not an issue. Moving on, let's first remove the product A partition to make space for the GSI ROM. So copy the entire command, paste the command here, hit enter, and now let's flash the GSI ROM. For that, type in the command of fastboot, flash, partition name, which is the system partition, then we have the file name as gsi.img, hit the enter key. The flashing will now start, take up to around four to five minutes at the very max. So let's see that is happening or not. Okay, one more thing, currently I've removed the product A slot and the ROM is flashing the A slot as well. But let's say you have removed the A slot and the ROM is flashing the B slot. In that case, you might get an issue that there's not, space is not there on your phone. In that case, please remove the B slot as well. Again, I'm repeating, in our case, the ROM is flashing A slot and we have removed the A slot of this as well. But if the ROM is flashing B slot, in that case, you might get a warning that there's not enough space on your phone. So when that happens, please remove the product B slot as well and then flash the ROM file once again. This time there will be no issue whatsoever. So with that said, let's wait for the ROM to be flashed onto our phone. So guys, the flashing is now complete. Your last action, to do a phone formatting. So type in the command of fastboot space dash w, hit enter. Formatting is complete as well. Now type in fastboot reboot. And after that, the phone will now boot to the OS. But the first booting up will take us some time. I guess around 30 to 40 seconds in some cases. With that said, let's first have a look at the boot logo or the boot animation which will signify we have done the flashing successfully. So they might appear in time soon. Let's keep a tab on that. And after that, the ROM will take some more time for booting to the OS. So it's just a waiting game, which we have to play right now. And the boot animation should now appear in time soon. Let's see that. So this is the superior OS boot animation. Flashing went fine, this means. So let's wait for the ROM to boot to the OS. And with this, we are inside the OS. So let's get started. Let's skip this for now. Let's set up offline if you want. You may connect to Wi-Fi, link your Google account and restore all the app data, but that will take ages. So I'm skipping that. Let's accept terms and conditions simply. And that is it, I suppose. Nothing else, skip this for now. Next, dark theme navigation is fine. Let's get started. The wallpaper is something unique. And we are now inside the OS. It has a few pre-installed Google app. I use a G app variant, so I'm getting the G Google app, the Play Store. And that is it. So it has the core G app with the least number of G app packages. And this is the QS price transparency effect is there as well. And from here, you may get all the tweaks on your phone, you could see. So status bar tweaks. Items, you must show hide the items from here. Quick pull down, let's say right hand side. It's working. Clock positioning, show seconds. Battery status style, let's say circle, it's change. I want up this next to the icon, it's shown now. Buttons, navigation mode, three button navigation is fine. Invert layout, add long of action, power menu, let's say advanced restart is there or not. It is there and we have the option to reboot to the system, UI, recovery and fast boot, all the options are there. That's great to see. Then anything else fancy as such, no. Gestures, quick tap. Let's enable this, add a on tap back twice, have to take a screenshot. Okay, let me see now. 
it's working well and good no issue whatsoever so i could take a screenshot okay that is also there it's working as well then we have the lock screen tweaks only four settings you may also add the weather if required that will require wi-fi and gps as well notification tweaks annoying notifications should be will be placed on a vibration for when the screen is on let's turn this off miscellaneous tweaks okay that is only one but we have the spoofing which is the main part so if you want to pass a strong test currently the file which i am having the keybox file will no, is currently banned i suppose so it will only pass the basic and the device it will not pass the strong test just give me a second i'll verify it once again what is the status of the file and you could see it's currently soft banned you must still able to pass the strong test using the trick if you want i have made an article on that on how to pass the strong test using the band key box so there are a few approaches with that the steps are given here use the first second method the third is quite lengthy ignore that either the first one or second one will help you pass the strong test using the band key box do have a look at that and also please type on update pif this will help you get the new pif json file so it's very important type on update pif then load the keybox file from here and then have a look at my article and get the job done for the keybox you may ask from me this is my article i will email you the file personally this is the file i will either email you the file or you may also get the file from my keybox module both will work so just drop an article your over here drop in your comment in the email in the comment section i will mail you the file personally and once that is done you can use the file over here and use my article to pass the strong test using the band key box and apart from that what all is has to offer display section pure black okay that is there as well great to see now does all the gsi roms have this feature which i love it maximum 120 hertz minimum let's also keep 120 hertz this will lead to some battery drainage but that's fine for me i want a fluid ua experience Tap to wake, tap to sleep, both should be working. It's working. Okay, double tap to wake is currently not working. I'll show you how to make this working as well. So simply open the app, triple info app from here. Then go to the your U OEM section, which is Xiaomi in my case. Enable double tap to wake. It's enabled now. And let me now show you. It's now working well and good. And apart from that, in the system section, what all is there? Let's see triple settings the same app as before you may carry out all the tweaks from this page the tweaks are given in my article as well uh, at the end of the article these are the fixes let me show you once if you're having any issue then please have a look at this article it will help you fix all the issue from this section only these issues are with regards to the you could let me show you 5g sms bluetooth calls 90 hertz display fingerprint brightness whatsapp dt2w increased brightness wi-fi headphone jack all the fixes are here only for example in case of the 4g not working simply open this here install the ims apk enable both the toggle then type in star hash star hash 4636 hash star hash star and after that choose the go to phone information and choose the nrlt or nrvoner lte from the drop down list and then do a restart you will then get the 4g and 5g all the steps are given in the article please have a look at that and apart from that in the wallpaper style section you may change the color from here or from this section switch to light theme from here it's now enabled but i like the black one only themed icons from here and then average size is fine 5 plus 5 you may change the icon style from here let's go with the samsung one i like that one only then we have the icon shape okay this one is now done font there are a lot of font styles to choose from as you could see Acknolica, okay, that is not there. I choose let's choose this one, something different. Icon shape, pebble, I use that only. And you will see all the other choices are here. Then hit the apply and it's now implemented across both the home screen and the app drawer. Talk about the home screen launcher, then let me see it over here. Home settings, notification dots, change settings, and the launcher is using a Trebuchet from the same as Lineage OS. Allow and that's just about it so guys if you have any query you may ask from me via the articles or videos comment section and thanks a lot for watching this video